Well, how's it going, Keeks men? Welcome back to the battlefield. This is NTW3, the mod for Napoleon Total War, and we are on the map of Borodino. This map we have seen plenty of times, and today it's going to be a, another bloody clash between the French and Russians. Um, these are also going to be played by two clans. You have the Nap Napoleonics playing as the French and the RC clan. Um, playing as the Russians, at least I believe it's the RC clan um, in the Discord didn't say who the opposing clan was, but kind of gathering from who I know plays on what. Either that or they had two subs from the RC clan in their clan, plus one from the Buck and Ball clan, and I honestly wouldn't know. So I'm pretty sure it's RC. I apologize if I'm wrong for whatever reason. <clears throat> but um, we can go over the points before this battle kicks off. Like I said, the um, Napoleonics are taking the French and uh, the RC clan taking the Russians. Uh, these are from the 1812 cores. And um, looking from the stats here on the board, Napoleonics, they're ahead at 34 wins with the RC at 20. Um, so fourth and first place fighting out. We will see what happens today. You know, who's going to take the win? Will it bump uh, RC closer to Rheinbund? Or will uh, the Napoleonics increase their lead? Now, let's go over the cores here before we start. On the Russian side, you have an 8-point Tuchkov, a 11-point Wittgenstein, a 9-point Duktorov, and a 12-point Bagration. On the French side, you have a 9-point Ponatowski, you have a 10-point Eugen, 11-point Davu, and 8-point Schwarzenberg, which, where is that guy at? There he is. 8-point Schwarz... It kind of looks like a, uh... Kind of looks like a, uh... Austrian core. Where's the rest of his army? Oh, there he is. A Cav Corps. A Cav Corps, by the way. So, um... But, yeah, it looks like the French are going for your typical advance. The Russians have held themselves on this entrenched high ground. With a portion of their army, at least. You know their guns are getting set up at this point in time. And uh, they will be bringing the pain, as is uh, usual for a Borodino match. I mean, a lot of open ground. This historically was a very bloody battle. A lot of artillery play. And though the Russians were the conquerors, technically, of this field, he suffered heavy casualties. I think that actually made the entire battle quite bad. It looks like we have uh, Ponatowski's... Uh, Cavalry getting chased back by some Kazaki Lancers. The river may slow them down. Oh no, they're going to catch these poor two Lancers. Actually catch a lot more than that. A battle at the Ford. And uh, the Polish get their cavalry out of the way as... Uh, some, what is this? Some Chevaliers rushed over to help him out. He interested, interested to see what the Cav Corps can do. Um, this Austrian Cav Corps, you know, what what are they going to be able to accomplish? Now, Eugen is quite a large force on the field. I do believe uh, Eugen brought, yeah, he brought an army of 2,400 men, biggest army on the field. Out of all cores on the Russian and Imperial side. Of course, you have um, Davu, 11 pointer. He brought 1,900 men. So, a, a decent sized army as well, considering he's a 13 pointer. You gotta remember, though, that he has probably some very good quality infantry as well. Interestingly enough, the Russians do not have hold of this high ground. That may have been, I'm, I'm assuming that was very intentional. Because the Russians definitely get deployed to hold this. But that's usually a rough fight right there. It looks like they are going to start off holding across the river. It looks like some skirmishers are going to get charged by Eugene's Chasseur Cheval. So Russia holding across the river for their, at least for their plan as of now. They're all going to be concentrated in this one area. And obviously they have reinforcements that will be pushing up to meet 
the lines that are already here around this area right now they have a lot of roads though getting to where they're at so <clears throat> but we are seeing all right so we're seeing the maneuvering happening here Ponatowski, he's going to be in the forest here facing off against uh the reabout you have Eugene. he's stretching his forces along the entirety it's kind of foggy it's kind of hard to see um along the entirety of this hill and then you have Davu pushing through the roads Maybe he's going to either drop through this road here or he'll push up here. Maybe even he could uh, push up to this road and push onto the far extreme right flank here. That's something you don't see very often, actually. So I'm curious if that's what they're going to try. Something different. We do have a lot of cavalry over here scouting. That's kind of giving me an indication they may actually try a far right flank. But for now, um, horse artillery covered by some uh, chasseur cheval. Cavalry, they're going to set up and start harassing as best they can. The Russian army, you have mass amounts of infantry from Yuzhin pushing across open field. I see Ponatowski's artillery in the background firing at the Russian position as well. And I do believe Yuzhin has more artillery that is set up on the high ground. Some 12 pounders who are firing. And you see the Russians mobilizing far out there, pretty far out there, but the 12-pounders definitely have their range. I imagine this was probably the cheapest kind of uniforms you could get. <laughs> That's why they're all white. And then, of course, like I said, the Polish in reserve. Bitter rivals of the Russians. I mean... Early on in Napoleon's like rise to power, not even Napoleon's rise to power, early on in like the French Revolution, I mean, Poland got really gypped by the Russians. And there's nothing that any of the uh, allies really could do about it at the time. So uh, Poland would definitely have a reason to side with France over Russia, as uh, they already had some bitter uh, clashes. All right, guys, we are back. It crashed, man. At least it was early on. <laughs> it didn't take very long to get back to where I was. Uh, but this is about where we were. And here we're seeing, as I was just starting to notice, a lot of cav action here with Eugene, Davu, and uh, Schwarzenberg. As uh, they're getting really aggressive, starting to really scout a lot of this corner. Um, as you can hear, there's drums over here. So there is definitely a force which is moving up to meet. So either Russia is sinking... They're going to flank the French or the Russians are anticipating getting flanked themselves. Um, in which in which case, this crossroads, it would prove to be a key vital portion of this fight. Despite, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's distance from the actual conflict at this point in time. Now, remember, guys, they do have the new LOC rules with the lines being need to be connected in order to keep them. And if you intercept any point in that line, it obsoletes the ones on the other side. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And that, that creates a much more interesting style of fighting for these LOCs. Now, we do have Yujin. He is starting to get engaged as he's inching forward some of his men. I, oh my gosh, do I hear cav engagement? I do. Looks like uh, Russia had Dragoons sent in, and there's more Dragoons. They are definitely looking to be... Uh, man, some Gasaris getting chased down. Russia, though, looking to be uh, outnumbered here. However, it is still a bit of a hot fight. Russia, though, going to have to cut their losses. And quite honestly, they may have some very severe losses. Although it does look like we have uh, some infantry trying to support this cav engagement. But still, France got to be very careful. They are, oh my gosh, there's a lot of infantry right here. Our men are running for us. And now France is getting counterattacked as Russia has fresh reinforcements on the field.
And uh, the, the Imperial is actually not looking too good, as you can see, with their cavalry. It's getting tied down in the forest. And the taking the, the fight in the forest is not looking good for them. More, oh my gosh, this is just a sucking in tons of cavalry on both sides. As you can see, Davus rushing forward some Chasseur Cheval. Russia has taken some losses, but so has Schwarzenberg. Schwarzenberg? I'm just going to say Austria. Um, Russia, though, actually uh, pulling back. They've lost one, maybe even two, with Davus sending in fresh cavalry. And both sides probably are going to pull back and regroup. As that was actually quite a costly cav engagement. In the trees, no less. Still a lot of movement of troops here. We do have uh, Polish skirms engaging the Russian held position. They have artillery set up. Ooh, thunderous guns, I'm telling you. But this does provide a very interesting situation here, guys. So, what do you do when there's an army way on the flank? Well, um, what I would assume they're doing is they're just going to push into the center with both Davu and Yuzhin. At least I feel like that's what they could do because Russia is tied up in these tree line. By the time they rush over to help their ally, France could probably make a quick attack here and break through the Russian center. Um, we'll see how well that pans out. Right now, the French are all concentrated, for the most part, together. A lot of infantry. But we'll see what they end up doing. a lot of skirms they have set up too with infantry behind them we have uh Ponotowski pushing forward his troops as well i think this is gonna be a regular advance along this line and russia hopefully realizes that quickly and will rush out of the tree line maybe they can attack the flank of france the problem is france may be controlling um if they mass up their artillery with some infantry support and cavalry they can stop any russian counterattack on their flank while pushing forward the masses in the center. I feel like right here is where the French are going to attack. Right in this area. There is, you can hear drums. There is, there is troops over in this area. Just how many is the question. Right now, all we have is some Russian skirmishers. And France is still not ready yet to attack. They're still shifting their forces over, so it'll be a second. So Russia can still realize maybe their mistake. And at the same time, you have a Russian force moving on the flank, and they have not stopped. Thank goodness. I was worried they would just be stopped and not moving. But at the same time, that also provides another opportunity for the French to turn around, maybe, at, you know, crash upon this Russian flank. Don't know how well that would actually end up for them. But for now, this Cav Corps is going to keep an eye on them. Of course, like I said, Davu is going to keep some forces to uh, be turning turning the corner, maybe. He has some 8-pounders as well, setting up to be a defensive line. Here we go. The push being made by Yuzhin. Imagine being one of these units marching along.
Oh my gosh, yeah, look at this, guys. Devu advancing in force, concentrating in this one area. If you see this, run. Or get, get something to meet it. That's masses of artillery and heavy cab and infantry. Because you cannot... I'm, I'm assuming it's not hidden. Yeah, it's seen. Russia knows. Let's see if they start reacting to it. Yep, they're already reacting to it. And that's what you kind of have to do when you see... You know, I mean, how many units is this? This is 10? Yeah, 10 regiments from France. I don't know if Russia has enough forces to actually engage this. This core over here almost needs to pull back, run along the road, and push into the flank here to reinforce, I feel like. Russia is a little too split up, and that's what I'm concerned about. This is going to be a bloody fight pretty soon here. I can already sense it with so many forces in one small area. Oh, man, this is going to be bloody. Extremely bloody. And look at this. Pontoski's here, too. Three cores. Technically, I guess four, if you count the Cav Corps, the uh, Austrian cavalry. Four cores, all facing this one center. And yet, no one's actually started any regular volleys yet. No one's gotten close just yet. We have artillery that is starting to shift over. Maybe they're going to set up here to start firing into the French line. They better hurry. There we go. It is starting. It is starting. Russia standing their ground, pouring in some volleys against Eugene's Corps. Yushin's core not responding actually. There we go. And Debu's core is engaged as well. He does have reserves. He's probably going to push towards the town. I, I bet you Russia has shifted their core back over towards the center. This is where the real fight is. Oh, man. Look, look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh that looks so cool. That looks so cool. Skirmishers are taking some heavy fire here. Against that Russian core. Ooh. These Russians are getting uh, some hot fire. Oh, look at that. We have a general right here. Eesh. Artillery set up to protect the flank. Oh, what? Yushin sent cavalry in. Did it kill the artillery? Oh, that is so unfortunate for Russia. The artillery have been super crucial here. Now, we do have Ponotovsky actually pushing up Trying to take some of this high ground here. Russia trying to react to this. The Polish have totally formed up. There is artillery. I'm not sure if it's way over here or sitting right here. There we go. There's the other Russian core. So Russia did disengage on this right flank. I'm very glad they did. That was a very smart move on their point. So they are reinforcing their center now. And the real question is, guys, looking at this, 
is France going to exploit something? And I think if they are, it will be this left flank with Ponatowski. I think they have a lot of infantry. They even have more cavalry starting to gather here. Look at all this infantry that's pushing across. Russia does not have enough, which is why that Russian Corps mobilizing along the road, trying to rush over to defend this right side. The nice thing is Russia, I mean, you can see they can pull back their right flank. Their center even has pulled back so that they aren't going to get caught in the pullback that Russia will have. But Russia is not inching back yet. They are standing their ground for now. I mean, they're, they're exchanging some regular volleys. They haven't broke. They've taken insane heavy losses. At a certain point, I imagine Russia will cave in a little bit. There we go. Yeah, they're starting to pull back just a little bit. And actually see the French relocating a little bit of their reserve line. Artillery is inching up. That's probably what's going to be a huge game changer. Is this heavy? Is this heavy dragoons? Oh, yeah. This is what the Russians are going to have to watch out for. Once these guys are unleashed, it will be all hell. All hell will break loose. Over here, Davu has actually uh, made a little bit of headway. You can see, oh man, these poor Russians. They're just defending their home, you know? Imagine just you're defending your home against invaders. The French are the aggressors here. No way. No way there's not cavalry to defend this artillery piece. But yeah, so the Imperials are going to let their artillery set up and start doing a lot of the fighting for them. We do have some cavalry in the back. Austrian cavalry getting chased down. France has to divert forces. Yeah, this is a whole corps still moving here. Which is allowing... Uh, it's, it's allowing the uh, French a chance to uh, inch out over here. Ooh, they're getting caught. But yeah, the artillery now firing different two different spots. You have 12 pounders. The knockback from those is going to be insane. You do have a, res like a bit of a reserve line moving to maybe counter counterattack this flank you can see the French are for the most part falling back they don't seem to want to take the line fight at this point in time more cavalry inching up and Russia actually uh, pulling back from this oh what do we have here Russia charging in going for some skirmishers as cavalry goes for the artillery piece as well Russia is pulling back just due to the massive amount of artillery they are facing. I don't know. I think we're seeing a melee attack from Russia here on the right flank. Russia is full on attacking here. Look at this advance. Poland's going to receive this as best they can. Artillery is still in position, but I mean, Yuzhin's core is breaking on the right. Cavalry having a clear charge. Oh no. Oh, canister fire, but it missed. Beautiful charge by the Dragoons snagging that Yuzhin artillery piece, and Russia is lurching forward at the same time over here. House being fought for, that's about it. So we're just going to stay focused on this engagement here. Russia has grenadiers to spare and infantry and is constantly charging forward. 
cab charged by Yujin's cavalry dragoons to save a section of their flank. Oh my gosh. I believe the artillery piece has been saved. What a beautiful attack. Well executed by Russia. However, now we have the flanking Dabu advancing here. At the same time, he's trying to push in for this LOC as well. Oh my gosh, a cavalry charge for the guns and infantry from Eugene's Corps. Our men are running. And France is definitely taking some losses from their artillery as Russia lurches forward once again, smashing into the left flank of Dubu's Corps. Now there's cavalry, those dragoons gonna charge in, trying to tie him up. The flanking charge by Dubu's Chasseur Cheval. And a rally does get popped. Now, Russia is still smashing into Yuzhin's core. He does have a reserve. Ponotovsky's core, he can start pulling back, but the center for Russia is for the most part broken. You still have a lot of Russians in the field. This is starting to look like a Russian victory. We've seen a lot of wavering from France. And it is forcing Dubu to pull away from the town, and what a setback. What a setback for the French. Kazak is now smashing into Yuzhin's third core. Yuzhin's had quite the, uh, quite the loss. Even Ponotowski is getting a charge on the flank. He's having to pull back his core. They have to pull back and reform. They still have troops left. But Russia keeps trying to harass and not let them pull back. Russia actually pushed up on the left side here, and Ponotowski has not been able to uh, react to that center attack because they are dealing with a flank. Beautifully executed by Russia. I know I already said it, but man. Just seeing them just pushing forward, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose in the center. Now, there's still plenty of artillery. Our general is under attack. From France, they can force back a Russian attack at a certain point. You can see Russia, they're probably not going to push much further without exhaust. I mean, their troops have to be tired. And also, we're seeing some uh, cavalry in the back lines going for a Russian general. Hmm. <laughs> Now, looking at the grand scheme of things, Davu still has his core. His core is still healthy enough to be able to re-engage the enemy. Yuzhin got pretty torn up, but he does still have some forces left. Ponotowski is looking not bad. He's not looking bad. He still has his core. Russia is really starting to push on him, but he's probably going to get across the river and a reform in the forest. Russia doesn't have guns to really harass this army. But still, like I said, guys, the French can definitely still do this. They can still make a comeback. Especially here. I mean, Davout has a lot of fresh troops. For the most part, his army got away without taking heavy losses. Eugene was the most... Most of the losses were from Eugene. But his troops, so long as they rest up, he should be fine. Uh, they have time to rest up for another good 10 minutes. 
and then attack again. Now maybe Rush is not going to give them that opportunity, that luxury. Need a lot of Russians mobilizing here. Oh, they have artillery. I didn't know Russia had artillery. Russia has plenty of forces. They probably have a core that's been barely engaged. If I were to guess. Yep, and Russia is launching another attack. They do not want to give the French a chance to reform, rest up. And that's what they're doing. And they're focusing on the right core. Look at these guys. They are catching, oh my gosh, Russia is catching France yet again. Cavalry's rushing for it as well. Man, this is, these are just, they're just really doing what they should to keep the pressure on the French. And it's causing a lot of, uh, A lot of breaking here. Now, Eugene does have his cavalry. He's going to charge it in, try to stop, staunch the bleeding. And he may have to sacrifice these Italian dragoons to do it. Kartoski has fallen back. Russia still hot on their heels. France can fall back quite a bit here. Is that General Staff? I did not die well. Now the Polish have to at some point make a stand, and I do believe this is where they're going to try making somewhat of a stand. You have Davu pushing up to take some much needed pressure off of Eugene and Ponatowski. And now he has the heat. The heat being brought to him. I'm watching keeping an eye out on this Austrian Hussar. Now they could do a back charge on... Yeah, they could do a back charge with all their cavalry, and honestly, they could they could collapse this entire line here. Oh, another cav engagement here. Russia needs to watch out, though. Cavalry in the back lines could be a huge problem for them. They need to pull some forces back to face this cav core. Sorry's getting charged. And here we go, back line. The sandwich, I mean, the Ponotowski counterattack with the cavalry in the back lines causing a huge Russian mass rout. And now Ponotowski charges in melee. I think the Imperials may have outplayed them with the Cav move. Yep, there goes that entire flank. Same time, you have Russia trying their best to quickly close in, break up. 
Fusion's the remainder of his core. And it seems to be working quite well. Trying to ignore the disaster that has struck on their right flank. You have Schwarzenberg who is going to be a problem here in just a minute for Russia. And so Russia has a bit of a flank on the Polish. He's going to try to defend that at the same time. Keep pressing. Oh my gosh. Our men are running. Disaster strikes the Russians and the French within a couple minutes of each other. The problem is Russia cannot deal with the Cav presence now from the French. The French alliance, they've got them beat when it comes to cavalry. It's not even like it's even that much, it's, it's Hussars. Those Hussars can be so deadly. Oh, there we go. Once again, Austria. Oh, they did charge a square that time, but they're trying to harass this Russian army. Look at this. They're going for it. They're like sharks on the hunt. Olin charging in against Russia. That first charge does break. Maybe the second one won't, especially with cavalry. Pressing the attack as well. They do hit a square though. And we have some grenadiers who are gonna attack that square now. Still, it's not looking super smooth yet. Even with the massive loss to the Russians on this cab this this like their their flank. Poland needs to make a huge play in like the near immediate future which actually I'm seeing a lot of as I say that rush is starting to cave I'm seeing it breaking along the board for Russia uh oh yep that's four units almost five I think with uh, Dabu pushing in from one side, Ponotowski, even though he is badly bloodied, pushing from the other side, they may crush this flank, and then Russia will only have a small contingent left over here. Beautiful flank by the Hussars. That may be what they needed. Like the Austrian Hussars or not, they look good. These guys look good with the, with the black horses, black hats, the gold and the blue. It looks sharp. All right, and now with the fight kind of winding down, LOCs are gonna be crucial here. You can see the French have one, two, and three all leading out of the map so then they can build off of that they can take this one maybe or take this one and... oh no Tuchkov has been killed we're not saying um they'd have one two three if they take this one that's four the russians have one i'm assuming two three four so borodino itself may actually be the crucial no they need to take this one too. They need one, two, three, four, five. And they have one, two, three, four. They need these plus this, the French do. They need all of this. And these guys need all of this. 
though. It's still up in the air. Still up in the air very much so. So we have a Russian f unit that is going to be uh, trying to... Uh, I don't know where they're going. They're going to get charged by C4s here, but they're going to probably try to go for this one out here. This is what I'm going to assume. The Russians are going to... Uh, if France, if they play the cards right, they can push around and attack this one. That's going to give them their four... If they can then push up and take Borodino, which I'm assuming they're going to do with this Ponotowski unit, uh, they will be set. That's all they have to do. Focus that one down. Ignore the Russians here. Go for the attack on this LOC, and they will win. Of course, you have some Russians over here going for this LOC. Now, there is uh, <laughs> Kushin making a stand. Oh, wow. Some infantry here. Some skirmishers from uh, the Cav Corps. And Eugen himself. So he's making a stand here. He does have more troops from Davu coming over to support. LLCs are what's going to be the worry now. And the battle is starting to get to that point. It's almost to the... Uh, it's almost to that point which it's all about LLCs. Oh my gosh, the artillery though. Oh come on, Russia, just stand and shoot him. Why are they paying attention? They could have shot him in the face. Good. Another disastrous charge. And this Russian core looks like they're about to collapse. Imagine this guy's fighting in... You know, you almost beat them, and then you see a fresh wave of Russian troops pushing over. And you're just like, how can there be so many of them? I do believe, yeah, Russia is going to probably die. There's a lot of French here. This building has fallen to the enemy. Oh, they took it. What? Uh, they'll take it back. Still, that obsoletes... That, that obsoletes it a lot. For uh, France, they need this one. This one actually stops them from... Actually, no, they still have these two. Technically, this one, I believe, lines up with this one and this one. So this is a line of one, two, three. And then if they have these, that counts two, four, five. I mean, they, yeah, that, that was well played by Russia. We'll see if they hold that. I have my doubts. Not going to lie. Oh, there's, people, there's Russians in here, too. So Russia has LLCs. So long as they can hold on to it, they will win this fight. What's unfortunate right now is Russia is caught in between two cores. And the shootout is just killing them. Plus the artillery is smacking in. It's it's just it's a disaster for them. We have 
killed their general, sir. Now uh -oh. we must pray. Oh no. Gratian has been slain. That was the core sitting right here. And um I do believe yep, they just took it back. I don't know, guys. It's kind of looking pretty pretty good for uh for France right now for the Napoleonic clan. We may see a Napoleonic victory, another French victory, however hard fought it was. Man, they they got the stuffing beaten out of them. As is historically accurate, actually. Honestly, I mean... You have to say, that's... that's Like, even though Russia may have technically taken a, a loss... France doesn't have a whole lot left to uh, say about it. This Dragoon's getting tired. Although, let me see. I'm just going to fast forward here. I don't know if there's a whole lot else that's going to really happen. Um, although, it does look like the Cav Corps is running down these poor Russians. Oh, man. Plus the artillery. Yeah. Let me keep fast forwarding here as we keep moving on. Another cav charge here. Um, oh man. They have one more unit here by the LLC. It's probably going to come down to this LLC right here. Like I said, there, there's one or two units over here that are still engaging. There's that one Russian unit that pushed over here. Uh, but let's see if they can take that. But Borodina itself needs to also be seized. Also, the general is going to try to inspire these men to go in and take that one. Um, and then, of course, Davu, I believe, is moving towards this one. Um, so we'll just, we'll just watch these play out a little bit. Um, but like I said, I think it's going to be a LOC victory. For the French. Man. What a gruesome sounding fight right there. Yeah, it does look like uh, a rush is going to lose this one. There we go. Um, so I do believe that is enough. They have one, two, three, four. Actually, the draw. So they have to take this one. They have to take this one as well in order to make this a not a draw, but make it a win for them. Um, or or go and take some of the ones in the back, which they do have something going over here. I don't know if they're going to take that, though. Oh. The yeah, Russian's stubbornly holding on. The fight way over here, guys, actually is very crucial. Ah, Russia lost it. All right, well, it's either a draw or the Napoleonics can win this. So we'll see what they actually end up being able to do. We have 
taken the buildings, huh? Oh, they took it? How do they take it? All right, well, that definitely is sealing it. It obsoletes the French, the, the, the Russians, uh, almost obsoletes the Russians because they don't have any of these LOCs anymore. So that's going to seal it for them. Uh, so I, I feel like I can just fast forward here. Even, even though this is a, the, men are running, a fight to remember here by the LOC. I mean, what a fight. Borodino, you know, never disappoints, I feel like. Quite a... This man. building has fallen to the enemy. Yeah, they took that one, but, you know, they uh, took Borodino itself Our as well. Our men are running, sir. So Napoleonic clan win by LOC. I mean, I don't think the timer's going to... I mean, they have two minutes left. Russia could lose this town. But they may not by the time it takes. Yeah, they may. Actually, it's very possible they could. Our men are running, sir. Either way, uh, like I was saying, a huge, uh, a, a beautiful fight. I think. The men are fatigued, sir. I must rest. This Russian corps here got just smacked around. They were in the middle of their attack, and then that that Cav corps came in the back and just charged them in the back, and that just murdered this flank. And at that point, then Poland could turn around. We've attack the, buildings up. Um, the rest of Russia. Even though Russia was really putting the pressure on the uh, the Polish. They were really putting the pressure on multiple sides. There was nothing else they could really do. Um, but uh, who was this sent to? Which one was this? Dabu. All right, the 13-pointer. Yeah, he got some good kills. Let me pull up the results here so we can see. So on the Napoleonic Imperial side, you have Sammy Jojo playing as the Cav Corps with 696 for the kills. Dollar sign playing as Yuzhin with 752. He took the brunt of the combat for that. Definitely. Arjun's playing as 13 point Davu, uh, 1402 for the kills. And then Isis playing as Ponotowski, 9 pointer with 1809 for the kills. So that's really good kills at the end, especially. Um, on the other side, you have Pope. He was playing Tuchkov, 8 pointer, 956 for the kills. Bring back Militia as 11 point Wittgenstein with 845. Young. Uh, 632 for the kills, playing as 9-point Duke Torov, and then Matt Bob playing as 12-point Bagration with 16-14 for the kills. So, man, some good kills on both sides. A testament to the bloodiness of this battle. You can see almost everybody, everybody took over 50% casualties, like three-quarters casualties, I'd say, on this fight. So, um, historically accurate. Even though Russia technically took the field, uh, they lost an insane amount of men, and that is no different in this replay as well all right guys well that'll be the battle today thank y'all so much for joining me hope you guys enjoyed thank y'all so much again as always for the support on my channel it means a lot to me um so next time you guys have a great rest of your day stay safe and as always i'll catch you all in another video